my name is Jill Harris. I'm the voice of Suleta Mercury and Mobile Suit Gundam, the witch for Mercury. And you are listening to The Gundam Watch. Previously on The Gundam Watch. John, what's that? Did you see? Did you see that message from Branson? Uh, if it had anything to do with Wu Fei, uh, no, I no, actively it's... avoid those messages. <laughs> no, I mean I understand the the pajama pants were getting kind of weird. I think he hadn't washed them yet. But no, there's uh something about an island, and he's stuck on. How did he get to the planet? Did did you launch him out the warm out with a taco machine? Well, you know, if if going if being solo on a planet by yourself made Wu Fei a better person, I was trying to do it for Branson. So, right, okay, let's let's. I just grab thought a, I, I just yeah. wanted him to be a better person. I understand that, but now he's on a planet by himself with his dog, and you know. We have that it, whole thing of him losing wait. his tomato. I don't want him to lose his dog. Let's get to the island before anything Dude, weird happens. If he's down there with his dog, who's been crapping on my bed? I don't know. General Roby, you're coming in. Begin transmission. Should you accept it now, here's your mission. Take your pilot seat and turn on your television. Logging into the Gundam Watch. What is a Gundam? We're gonna answer that question. From back in the classics to the newer expansion. Explore the lore with Dallas Moore and Branson. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Moriagare, come and join the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Moriagare, come and join the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Moriagare, come and join the Gundam Watch. Moriagare, Gundamu, come and join the Gundam Watch. Brought to you by Geek Devotions comes another podcast to keep your feet in motion. Listen in close and see what's all the commotion. Logging into the Gundam Watch. Dallas and Branson bringing their fandom to you with the passion of the veteran instructing the new. We're diving deep, but the same these views and reviews. Welcome to the Gundam Watch. Hello, hello, Gundam fans and those who think they might be Gundam fans. Welcome to another long-awaited episode of the Gundam Watch. Brought to you by Geek Devotions, a network of podcasts of devoted geeks who are devoted to letting you that you letting you know that you are loved. That's right. If you don't listen past this very second, know this. You are loved. You are made for a purpose. God has a plan for you. And we are excited that you're here with us today. Joining me finally on this deserted island. It has been nothing but me and my dog, Poufay. And I'm excited to finally have some company around here. First and foremost is our captain, our veteran, the leader of the tribe, Mr. Dallas Mora. Ahoy. Uh, I, how, first off, how long have you been here? How did you get here? Is the dog okay? Have you been eating tomatoes? Uh, actually, I have found that the soil here is very fertile. And uh, because I've gone completely organic, Poufay's gassy problem has been cured. No. Oh. Turns out the dog does not like kibble. Okay, well, we can fix yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, also joining us is my brother in Christ, my 
fellow cohort and all things craziness and DM extraordinaire, Mr. John Haru. Uh, you described somebody else, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we are hanging out here on the island of of Doa, Don't Dona, Donna, Dones, Dones, Demons, Dones for back. Uh, <laughs> Doana, <laughs> Moana. What can I say except you're welcome? And we got copyright strike. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right why are we here dallas well What's going uh, on? from the message it looks like we're you you found don's island which is Don, um, that's what his name okay. yeah and apparently the way off this island thanks for the warning is we have to watch um the episode that there's it's missing for a reason branson from the <laughs> timeline <laughs> But, Wait, but what, I what was you, curious. And episode and, missing episode. Yeah. Timeline? So here's the deal, John. Wait, I, no, I'm caught up on Gundam Wing, man. I. Yeah, I know. So you remember those and first then Mercury, three episodes? Which for Mercury, we we're, we're, were. I know we didn't finish the reviewing the episodes, but yeah, I. You you remember those first three episodes where Branson and I were like going through the original Gundam. No, you guys watched three movies. We were going through the original Gundam in movie format. But it was just three movies, yeah. So there was yes. no episodes that could be missing. Well, those are part of a bigger series. Uh, and there was one episode that is missing in basically almost everyone's release except for a Japanese release and, ironically enough, the 80s release in Italy. And that is episode 15 uh, Kukuru's Dones Island. You well, see so what happened? They made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And so he chose to release the entire episode. Monocera. Monocera. Yeah, so... Um, I've been on the island too long. I'm sorry. Yeah, you have. <laughs> so for, for those who don't know, this is a... this episode that we have to watch now and in the movie that, that somebody, somebody made um it was originally aired in 1979 and it is so bad hear me so bad the creator of mobile suit gundam you guys catching that the creator yeah. of gundam tomino has vocally said, I hate this movie. And he has personally pulled strings so it doesn't get released this movie later. or this show? I'm sorry, this show. He personally uh. hates this show. And when they ask him why, he goes, I can't tell you why because there are certain people who are still alive. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> when all have passed, I will reveal the secret. Hopefully he lives longer than those people. He but probably, yeah. No, my man, he probably has it in his will if <laughs> in the event. You know what I mean? In the mm-hmm. event of my death, we will share the secret of the missing <laughs> episode of Mobile Suit Gundam. Yeah. The ink, the ink that was used to draw on the cells. <laughs> it was mixed with the blood of orphans. Oh, no, Lord. See, this is why it was released in Italy, because they had ties with the mafia. And someone's wearing cement shoes because of this episode. That's why it's a secret. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to that be actually, fun. That actually might not be far from the truth. Well, I don't know. When it came out in the 80s in Italy, this is 1980 when it came out in Italy. And this is right after they had already canceled Gundam. Because originally, if you guys remember, the original Gundam was a failed series. Mm-hmm. It was a failed series to sell toys. And for some reason, people in Italy were like, hey, giant robot anime let's go with it and uh, so they just got it because at the time they were like uh they were like we need money <laughs> so they gave them episode 15 uh but later tom and i was like no 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 we're not doing that again so um there's a lot i could say about this but i feel like we need to talk about it on the back end of things so Jeez. um we don't have pods here so we all have to watch this together I mean, there's a palm tree over there that if you stand behind, 
it, it, it kind of makes it private. Why are there flies around that palm tree? Because it kind of makes it private when you stand behind it. <laughs> <laughs> just just make sure you have plenty of leaves when you go over there. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's get into expectations before before we do anything <laughs> weird. So, Too late. Bam, you've been on the island by yourself, baking in the sun. Uh, I have not made friends with a soccer ball, though. So there is that. I don't, ever, I don't know anybody who's ever made you. friends with a, a soccer ball. Or maybe it was a volleyball. What is oh. Wilson? <laughs> a... Bam, Bam's all like, make this reference for me. I can't be bothered. <laughs> For Branson to make this really work well, ladies and gentlemen, who had to go, I did not make friends with my volleyball that I named Haro. That's the only way you could have made this work for everything. <laughs> Thank you, Dallas. Pretend that I just said that. Okay. <laughs> Branson, what are your expectations for this uh, event? Uh, gosh. Um, well, did you I guess watch the original Gundam with me? I did. I did. And thoroughly enjoyed it, actually. So I'm really curious as to what made this so terrible that Tomino would request it never to be aired because I thoroughly loved the original uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. That, that's, you know, kind of what hooked me into want to watch Gundam Wing was, was wow, this is, this is really cool. There's a lot of story building here. Um, so I guess my expectations are, I'm kind of, I don't know if it's really an expectation so much as just an attitude of, of trepidation of what, you know, not really understanding if it, unless it's a complete departure from the established storyline, I don't know what would make this so terrible that Tom and I would be like, we're going to pretend like this never happened. <laughs> so I'm kind of scared, honestly. Right. <laughs> I, I we'll respect see. that. All right. Uh, John, this is your first time watching a, a original Gundam anything. No. So what are your expectations? No, no I, I poked at like the first two episodes of... Oh the og msg okay um so i knew what i knew what the art like that the characters look like as far as who was who and what was what and stuff like that mm -hmm. but no clue so like for real real going into this I, i'm as blank as you can be going into this episode without being a person who doesn't know anything about OG MSG, if that makes sense. Like yeah. I know what the characters look like and that's it. Right. That's fair. So as far as expectations, I don't know. I mean, I've seen eighties animation before. So <clears throat> with the reputation of how bad this episode is or that you're giving me anyway, uh, I too am with Bam on this one. I'm a little bit curious mm -hmm. as to, you know, what could have been so bad that it got pulled from the pecking order. But you know, I I, I don't I don't hold OG MSG in any high regard for the animation style per se. You know, mm -hmm. but I mean, it, I I don't know. I don't know. It, 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 I, I I guess I guess I'm going in saying I don't have any expectations other than that apparently it's supposed to be bad. All right, sounds good. Uh, my expectations. Um, I I watched a portion of this twenty plus years ago in college. Um, it it was fan subtitled um so i don't know how accurate the subtitles were back then um but it was awkward there it was just <laughs> there were things that were awkward and so my expectation is just to go let's get the full story today uh i've heard the legends the rumors um uh, i've listened to other podcasts talk about this over the years so i'm going into this going yeehaw um so that's my expectations. Be so before we before we uh make the dive into 
watching this train wreck of an episode. Um, I want to make a special acknowledgement to someone in the Discord, the Gundam Watch portion of the Geek Devotions Discord, who yeah. has been cheering for a new episode of the Gundam Watch. Yeah. Uh, let me pull up your name here real quick, or the name as we have it. Sorry, I was not prepared for this, but it was a thought I had right before we. No, that's a that's great. It's uh, is it Mystikai? It may or, be um, Mikasi. Uh, yeah, Mikasi. Uh, bro, you, that that made my day seeing someone being like, "Hey, where's <laughs> this show at?" For real, real, like everything that we did, we put it on hold for the end of the year, for the end of last year, and picking it up again's just been hard so thanks mm-hmm. for the encouragement uh it's gone a long ways to getting us to start doing this again right very good very good all right well ladies and gentlemen um we're gonna have a new bumper as we uh go uh branson where are you gonna watch this where i don't want to go behind the tree no 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 um well if you strategically arrange the leaves and the trees, it makes kind of sort of a projection screen. And since y'all brought the ship here, maybe we can get some projector material. All right. And do that. All right. Podcast magic. Let's go. <laughs> well, boys, we've watched a show. You guys ever seen the original episodes of the first season of G.I. Joe? Yes. Yes. Very reminiscent. <laughs> I can kind of see that. I I understand why Tomino wants to pretend like this doesn't exist. <laughs> I, I will say this. At least everybody's clothes stayed the same color. No, they didn't. Oh, did they not? No. There, there's a scene <laughs> where Amro's first flying to the island, and he's wearing his white jumpsuit, and then it cuts it to a, like an over-the-shoulder shot, and he's wearing his blues uh, with a helmet. <laughs> so not even that's there. <laughs> you know, I, I, I then then 100%, that was a 100% accurate comparison with the G.I. Joe. And... <laughs> yep. That was one hundred percent intentional, everybody. I <laughs> look. I'm I'm gonna, I'm going to give the listeners a peek behind the narrative for a brief second. I watched this second in order. Uh, we watch. I watched the movie first, and when we got to this, and yeah, I just didn't want to see the same story again, so I skipped through it enough to get the gist of it. So I may have missed some <laughs> things like that. Yeah. It it just felt so disjointed. Yeah. Like, random things happened. And, and, and it took me a while to even really figure out what was going on. Mm-hmm. Because did we lose somebody? Oh, there he is. Okay, he's back. Uh, it just it took me so long to figure out what was going on. Because stuff would happen, and I'm think, oh, they're going to do this thing about this. No, they went in a completely different direction. Oh, well, it's going to be this thing about this. No, they went in a completely different direction. And then some of the characters, the way they acted to certain situations, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. That 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 doesn't make sense. Why you said that? Right. And then there were other things that is like there were certain mechanics uh, involving the mobile suit that I'm like. I've never seen this in any other episode, but we're going to introduce this here. And they don't even introduce it in a very flattering way. Are, are, uh, you, are you talking about the jet in the middle of the Gundam? Yeah. I, I, are, are, are we talking spoiler stuff or? Yeah, yeah, this is this is flat open. Now, the core okay. fighter is not a new thing. That is that's that was established uh, earlier in the season. Uh, John. Uh, OK, well, OK, I, I had to ask because again, this was awkward. Well, no, 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 no. It, well, that too. But <laughs> the 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 suit had to get on its hands and knees for him to leave. Yeah, like, the, mean, the mobile suit was doing a yoga pose. It, it went so it that went, his stomach could fly away. That was why. 
the fact that the animator, the guys who did this, they're like, hey, this looks awkward. Let's make sure our character says this is awkward. Right. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing with the the transformation was just so awkward. And that that's one of the many animation issues that people had uh, with it. Now, Brett, you, you said, were, were there some other things in there that just caught you off guard? You're like, how did they introduce this? Well, like, like when he first lands on the island and someone's mysteriously throwing stones and lit sticks mm -hmm. and then he goes to hunt them down and weird shadows keep running by. I'm like, oh, they're going to do this whole island pygmy thing where like there's a lost ancient people and, you know, he's going to find this. No, it's just a bunch of kids. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, he just randomly shot laser bolts into the bushes and he didn't hit any of these children. And then these kids are throwing like fire sticks at this guy who showed up in this big ship. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then later when he wakes up and he realizes the, the Zaku suit pilot saved him basically mm -hmm. and helped him out. His response is, you are lying to these children to make them obedient to you. I'm like, that's strangely, weirdly specific. Like, right. like how did he jump to that conclusion? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, I was trying to, I was racking my brain going, okay, whereabouts in this franchise were we? This is like, you know, post dealing with Rama Rao a little bit. This is post uh, Bright slapping him around. Mm -hmm. All those things. He has a distrust of Zeon already, but that whole interaction with Doan at the front end was so awkward. Yes. So incredibly awkward. John, was that awkward for you, that whole interaction? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Understood. So, um, oh gosh, guys. Was the V voiceover awkward for you guys too? I uh, well, it was in Japanese. I was reading subtitles, so right. Um, I don't know if 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 the awkwardness was because it was actually awkward or because I'm not used to watching things it, in Japanese. It sounded like it was in a can. Like <clears throat> the older stuff didn't sound like that. Like it sounded like everything sounded very like you could tell like everyone was in different studios. It felt like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I will say this and again, giving the listeners a p another peek behind the kimono <laughs> here. Uh, when we were originally looking at this, Dallas had sent us a link to a video that's on YouTube uh, of, of this. And it, it didn't have the English subtitle. So it was just in Japanese and that's all there was to it. So I'm sitting there watching it because the original thought for this was that we were going to at least watch it to have a con some context for the animation. And as I'm watching it and I'm trying to listen for words that I do understand because I've done a bit of Japanese work. Um, the, 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 the actual mouth syncing is not synced up to the audio at all. <laughs> Okay. Oh wow! Not at all. And and so, so there were some other awesome stuff that I saw that I noticed, like, like when they were uh, landing down on the towards the planet at the very beginning when they were mm -hmm. dropping the bits of uh, mobile suit Gundam one. Mm -hmm. Um, when they're dropping them down, the two people in the cockpit, their eyeballs were not looking in the same direction. I saw oh. that. It was so <laughs> derpy, man. <laughs> I think, like the whole the whole thing was derpy. Like Doan's Zaku comes out with this elongated nose. He looked like the dadgum elephant man from Sandman or something like that. <laughs> and just like everything was just like this super weird elongated bodies and stuff like that. And there, okay, see, I didn't recognize that that was even a Zaku suit. Until they called it a Zaku suit later. I thought it was like, oh, this is a new type of Gundam. No, it's a Zaku suit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, there's reasoning. There's theories about, about it. And I'll get into that here in a little bit as to why it's so bad. Uh, but let's, let's get to the rest of the conversation. Was there, was there anything we enjoyed about this episode? How bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love to hate it. <laughs> no, I mean, like, okay, for real, real, like. 
So to kind of promote a different podcast that the three of us are on, if you go check out one of the earlier episodes of The Bottom Shelf, you'll see that the three of us had talked about a movie before uh, called, or bam, you might not have been in that episode, but it was uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. No, he was not. That was before my time. That was the um, first episode we ever did. But that, uh, but in that, in that specific movie, like there were actors who were like literally trying to, trying to see how bad the, they could make this movie because it was obvious that Ed Wood wasn't paying attention and watching this ultimately felt to me like there, there were people involved who were doing that, that they were just like, Hey, let's see how derpy and bad we can make this episode <laughs> right just to see if we can get it out you know what i mean it, mm-hmm. like yeah. and and th- and that's kind of how i started watching it like right from the beginning the moment i noticed that their eyes were looking in seven different directions that's right everybody <laughs> i said four eyes were looking in seven different directions <laughs> uh that's actually a pretty accurate description <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, I, I, I shifted my, I shifted how I was watching the movie. Cause I'm like, okay, this is, this is going to be plan nine territory. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a bad day tonight and I'm looking for just general inconsistencies. So, I will say this, the, the way the episode ended where Armoro says the reason that they keep sending suits to fight you is because you still have the scent of death, not not the scent of war on you. Mm-hmm. I can help you with that. And then he throws his Zaku suit into the ocean. Because I have seen the rest of the original Mobile Suit Gundam, and I understand, and I and I know the the ways they dive into the concepts of war and what war does and how it ruins innocence and and the effect that it has on a person it made me appreciate that moment, especially from Amaro who is in this weird in between of his dad wants him to always pilot the Gundam because he's a soldier Mm -hmm. and his mom wants him to be a pacifist and to never take a human life and to see him kind of, you know, try to balance the two and help, help bring peace to this guy who originally was an enemy because I'm exposed to the rest of the story. It made me appreciate that moment better Mm. i just hated that we had to go through 20 minutes of confusion and weirdness to get to that moment (laughs) yeah but yeah definitely oh man i don't the the entirety of everything and it it was one of those things where it it felt like people were just like ah whatever but like you said something in front end branson where everything just felt disjointed and Mm -hmm. like you you expected things to take place because you know Gundam. You know the original Gundam. You've watched it. It it didn't do what made sense in a Gundam show. Right. It doesn't feel like an actual Gundam episode. It feels like they went, uh, hey, there's a thing, and let's just uh-huh. put Gundam on it. It's almost like they had an idea for a movie for a or an episode for a completely different series. Mm-hmm. And they took that concept and then just stuck a robot fight at the end of it and called it gundam yeah you know like it was a completely different idea they were going in a completely different direction and then well we gotta but we gotta make it fit the rest of them we'll just have a robot fight at the end (laughs) um i want to interject on this a little bit just based up just because of what i do know about 80s animation Mm -hmm. uh, specifically the animation that's geared to sell toys Mm -hmm. Um, what probably happened with this episode was that they had a story that they wanted to tell and they had probably already told the story. And then they realized that either one, they realized that they didn't have enough story to fill the order of episodes from the network that they had sold the series to, Mm -hmm. or Two, it tested so well with that network that they ordered more episode on a uh, on a shoestring budget and timeline. So one of those two things I'm willing to bet probably happened. 
And so it was probably rush ordered filler, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes sense because even the quality of animation seemed subpar. Yes. Like it, it, it was hard for me to believe that this was in the same series as, you know, Char fighting against the the Earth Federation forces and and uh gosh just it just it didn't feel right. It 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 felt like it felt like fan art. You know, like if someone sat down fan and said fiction. I'm, it's a fan, fan fiction. fiction. <laughs> yeah. Fan fiction and fan art. It it felt like it was a fan fiction. MSG and... at the beach. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Yep. Um uh, so it, it didn't even live up to what it was supposed to fit in with. Mm -hmm. I, I actually, I think Dallas, you, you said it before. It didn't feel like Gundam. And yeah. if it didn't have the, the robot fight at the end, I might not have known that's what this was supposed to be. Yeah. Well, let me, let me paint in some, some colors for you guys that um, are there. The animated animation director, which the animation director is a key role in all these things they're the ones supposed to go okay this is what's supposed to look like let's make sure everything works right let's make sure the sounds good with the animation that's their job right mm -hmm. the animation director is a cat name uh, and i'm going to butcher it and i apologize Kaz kazuyuki uh suzumura here's the deal this person has one credit to their name Oh, this movie or this show episode show really? or episode this episode right here. Wow. Oh, no. Now, that, there's a couple like things it. that we there. There's a there's a lot of mystery. There's another character person in the in the, the casting notes that they don't know who that person is. And there's like and Tomino was known for doing multi doing like uh, what's more like pseudonym like pin names. Uh -huh. like because he would be involved in everything like this dude was involved with the music he was involved with the art direction he was involved with everything and he would use pin names for all that because he didn't want all the credit for basically everything but this particular name doesn't really work either from my understanding and i'm i'm pulling from other sources so I'm, hopefully i'm saying this correctly um i was listening to mobile suit breakdown which is another fantastic mobile suit uh, podcast that's out there uh they do a lot more deeper like dives than than what we do uh, but um, the the one the the main the one of the guys from that from it um, really interesting theory. His name is uh, Thom is the uh, is the guy uh, from the show, and he goes. His theory is this: somebody from the production company was sent to handle this episode. And they were the ones involved. Now, they have not been involved this entire previous 14 episodes. But uh, because this production company is like, we need to sell toys. So we're sending our own people in there to, to get involved with this, the process here. Yeah. Didn't know Jack Squat. And it was so bad that they were told, don't come back. Wow. And again, what, what did Tomino say? I can't tell you because certain people are still alive. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to shame some executives child ah now the, the now here's here's where the notes get really interesting the awkwardness of the of the elongated zaku and even mm. the awkwardness of of the the gundam at times right mm. before gundam was gundam there were two shows that were putting together and there was a show i can't remember the name of it that um they had suits but they weren't mobile suits like what we know where they were mechs they were actual suits that people would put on oh like there are apparently early sketches of the zakus that were built for a man to wear oh and likely this guy from the production has only ever seen the original elongated sketches that are meant for a body uh not the mech suits exactly uh huh. I'm I'm willing to buy this uh, theory, but yeah. again, we don't actually know. There's conversations about how, at this point, they were they were tanking money, which is what which would be one reason why they sent people. Mm -hmm. 
And so they didn't have the animators that they needed to do this well. Mm. So, yeah, there there's a lot of things taking place that did not work in its favor at at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, I agree. I agree. All right. Any other thoughts on it before we give our final review on it? I now know that the best way to look for a giant mech is to have a relaxing evening on the beach. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Because oh, he was I all want- like, I- I'm going to go find my Gundam. And when we see him, what is he doing? Laying back with his feet propped up, <laughs> watching the sunset on the beach. I guess he thought the mech was just going to just wash up on the shore and he just had to be there at the right time. I, I want to point this out. One last thing that did bother me. How the heck did they, like, he was so worried that they were going to find him. How did they find him? How did the, the, the rogue Zaku show up? What And why were they so concerned about fighting him and killing these kids? What was so important about these kids and their parents? The, the, all of Zion's like, know. we got to. actually wrote that down. It was like, why, why do they want to kill the children? I don't understand. They, they, they fight with rocks and fire sticks. Why are we killing the children? I don't understand. Same reason why the Empire wanted to kill the Ewoks, my dude. Well, the Ewoks were just there, though. That that narratively makes sense because they had a base on the moon, and the Ewoks were just kind of there. <laughs> but there was nothing. There was nothing on the island except this old pilot with his old busted up Zaku suit and a bunch of children. And they're like, we're going to send suits to kill him. Yep. I I don't know. All right. Well, let's get into it. John? Yeah. The question of the day is, did you like the episode? And whether or not you liked it, if this was the only time you saw Gundam, would you have kept watching? Yes, and maybe. Okay. Okay. I got to know why. Yes. I enjoyed it for all the wrong reasons. Oh, it's one um, of those. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, it, this is what well, I had to flip over to plan nine for this one. Um, <laughs> hey, so th- having a conversation off mic with everybody while I was watching this stuff, like for real, real janky, low budget 1980s animation is my sweet spot. I grew up watching a lot of the old Hanna-Barbera USA Cartoon Express jank Mm -hmm. that was designed specifically to sell me toys. And boy, did they sell me toys. Um, (laughs) You know, and I've made I've made the joke multiple times now about comparing this to the original episodes of G.I. Joe. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason for that is because that was you know, that was what I grew up watching. And then this gave me those nostalgic feels where you would watch it and then people's clothes change color for as scenes change. (laughs) And, (laughs) you know, various characters are there and then they're not. And, you know, it just is what it is. And I love that. Like that, there's a nostalgia for that of a simpler time when it was just like, Hey, I'm going to watch this blatant advertisement <laughs> for action sequences. So right. yes, that's why I enjoyed it. And maybe it would depend on if that jank continued, which I know it want it wouldn't. So, <laughs> and I think I would be watching it to try to see that happen again. And I would be disappointed and probably fall off because I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, like I, the first MSG series is, wasn't, isn't, and wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I've tried to watch it, not my jam. Mm. So it's not what I come to Gundam for. It's not what I come to animation for. Uh, this was a lot closer to what I like about eighties jank animation but so yeah i mean that's my explanation i i keep trying to rate this episode and i'm like we're not on that podcast right now so. <laughs> i gotcha i gotcha all right so branson um did you like it and if it was the only thing you saw would you have continued watching mobile suit gundam um i did not like it mostly because, and I'm going to sound a little bit like John right now, 
it made me want to just go back and watch the good MSG. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, it, it, it whetted my appetite for the parts that I enjoyed about it. Right. But in and of itself, the episode itself, no, I, I did not enjoy it. Um, I, I, I liked the idea behind it, but I thought it was very poorly executed. Ah. Um, as far as if this were my first exposure, would I keep watching it? If I were nine, ten years old, yeah, I probably would keep watching it because the big robot fight at the end would be enough to entertain me. And I'd be like, ooh, I want to see that again. <laughs> you know, because I, I, I grew up, I'm, I'm a child of the uh, original Power Rangers. You right. Know? So I that that was that was what I was used to. You have these comical slice of life moments mixed with epic battles that, you know, are very cheesily done. And that made me coming back for more. So <sighs> if I were nine or ten and saw that, yeah, I'd probably still keep watching. As an adult, no. No. <laughs> if, if this if if you told me this is what Gundam was, then I probably wouldn't have been interested. Right. I understand. I understand. For me, um, goodness gracious, um, it's not a good episode of Gundam uh, in the slightest. Um, I feel like I'm on the bottom shelf. It's not good. And um, um, it's just a terrible episode. Like it, it's, it's probably, it is the week. It, there's a reason that it, it's missing from stuff. I don't blame Tomino for not liking it at all. Um, now, there were other episodes of Gundam. And of course, Branson, you didn't get to see those episodes because of the way we watched it for the show here. Yeah. But that they weren't the greatest. The again, the animation tanked at times because of budget reasons. But this was a train wreck. And I can see John's argumentation of like, ah, uh, yeah, you know, it's you know, it's so dumb, it's funny, you know. But <laughs> if this was all I saw, I don't think I could have kept watching at all. Um so that's my thought process. And uh, for you guys listening, what do you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Um, if you did like it, I want to know why. Are you like John or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you like watching things where you have four eyes looking 20 different directions? I don't know what's happening more. <laughs> All right. Cool beans. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, our thoughts on that. Um, Branson, what's next? Well, apparently, this episode was so bad that the people who do Gundam currently thought, hey, what if we went back and tried again? What if we tried to do it, but to do it well? Yes. What would that look like? And let's make it a movie instead of a 20-minute episode. Awesome. So while so, they redeemed the movie... Uh, Branson, I think it was time for us to redeem this story with a maintenance report. <laughs> All right. Crew's maintenance reports now loading in three, two, one. Clearly, I've been on the island too long. I don't even remember how the show goes anymore. Maintenance report is when we take plot points or situations from the episode or movie that we've just watched about Gundam and find a way to draw out some spiritual truth from it. And uh, for this episode, one of the few things I liked about it, and I think I mentioned this before, was at the very end where, um, D what's the guy, Dorno, Domo? Doan. Doan. Domo's a whole other Japanese character. <laughs> Domo Arigato, Mr. They all, start, they all start to fade together after a while. Um. When Doan says, I'll do whatever it takes to, to protect these children. And Amaro says, you still have the scent of war on you. Help me. You know, I, I can help you take that off. And then he, using the mobile suit, throws his Zako suit into the ocean. And it's a way of saying goodbye to that past life and embracing something new. And uh, that reminds me of... Um, Hang on, I should have pulled this up before this. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. I'm all the Clint. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. 
Here, here's a topic. Right. An eggplant is neither an egg nor a plant. Discuss. <laughs> All right. Hebrews uh, chapter 12, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Armoro is basically telling Doan, one of the prop, one of the reasons you keep having this problem is because you won't let go of your past. Mm. You you are a you're a Zaku you're a Zaku pilot. You're a soldier for Zeon, and you're keeping this suit around, and that's attracting other soldiers to you and keeping putting you in these situations where you feel like you have to fight again. But it's the one thing you hate. So if you get rid of the suit, if you stop being a Zaku pilot then these circumstances won't seek you out. And he's basically encouraging Doan to cast off this way of life that's tripping him up and not allowing him to live the life that he wants to live. And I think that's something that's very important that we have to understand. Sometimes in our walk with Christ, we are encouraged to cast off things that that we've been holding on to. And sometimes it could be something bad, like uh, we don't, we don't want to forgive people that have hurt us or we've had a past trauma or something that has become part of our identity and we don't know how to live past that moment. Or it could be something good. It could be a, a habit that we don't necessarily care to get rid of or a, a way of life or a, a pastime that isn't uplifting or isn't uh, fulfilling or does, isn't pointing us closer to Jesus, but we like it and we don't want to get rid of it. And it becomes this weight that we have to carry. Mm. And the author of Hebrews is saying that since we're, you know, uh, chapter 12 comes right after chapter 11, where they talk about the the heroes of faith. And the author of Hebrews goes through and talks about all these different people who were icons in scripture of what it meant to have faith and to do amazing things for the Lord. And he says, since we've got all of these examples of people who put it all aside and followed God wholeheartedly. Let's do the same thing. Let's cast off the sin that so easily entangles us. Let's get rid of everything that weighs us down so that we can run this race. And as followers of Christ, when we enter into that, that time of, 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 of discipleship, we need to be willing to cast off anything that's tripping us up. Even if it's something that we think is important, even if we think it's something that is vital to our identity. Mm. If God is calling us to let it go, if if God is telling us this is weighing you down, you need to release it, mm. then we need to let it go. We need to be able to step forward and move forward into what the Lord has for us. And that can be a scary thing. I imagine that that Doan being a Zaku pilot, that's the only life he'd ever known. And and that he was grateful to be a, a a father figure to all these kids and to, you know, work a farm on the Island and just kind of be off by himself. But part of his identity was, but I'm a Zaku pilot. This is what I do. Mm. So he didn't know how to not be that. And it took Amaro throwing the Zaku suit into the ocean away from where he could get to it. So he could finally let that go and live into who he was. He felt like he was meant to be. And, and as followers, we've got to do the same thing. Even if it's something that, we enjoy or something we feel like defines us. If it's not what the Lord has for us, if it's not part of the Lord's plan for us, we need to be willing to cast it off and throw it into the sea so that we can walk in the way that the Lord has set for us. Dig it. I like it. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was your maintenance report. Appreciate you, Branson, bringing that and redeeming something out of this, uh, train wreck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, how can we encourage you? How can we pray with you? Reach out to us. You can uh, find us on uh, Instagram. Uh, we may have X still. I'm not sure. I got to go see if we still have X still active. Um, but hey, if you, other than that, you can contact us at Geek Devotions. Go to geekdevotions.com, find other information. Uh, John, is there anything you would like to promote? No. Okay. 
<laughs> How about you? B? I, I just I do I do want to I do want to say though that uh, if I want to promote anything, I want to pro- promote the Geek Devotions Discord because, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, uh, we got some feedback from Homeboy on the Discord, and that really, you know, I I can't speak on Dallas's behalf, but I mean that really oh, drove me. Drove me to uh, really want to get some start getting stuff out there on my projects. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for real, real, uh, your interactions with us on the Discord push more than you even understand. So, join us, yeah. communicates indeed. Cool beans. B, you got anything? Uh, I'm just gonna echo what John said. Yeah. Reach out to Geek Devotions, especially on Discord, because yeah. I've been ever since uh, Facebook decided to switch off for a little bit. I've actually not been on Facebook that much, and my life is happier. <laughs> 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 but I, I do enjoy the the discussions on Discord. I'm on I'm on there almost every day talking with people. So, and the big thing about Geek Devotions is it's a community. It's a place to belong. It's a place to get encouragement. And uh, especially for people who, because of work or life circumstances, they don't get out much. They're not able to go and hang with, you know, hang physically with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a place where you can go, get encouragement, uh, get people to pray for you, or just geek out about stuff. It's a great place to be. So uh, do not be the wallflower that stands off to the side and says nothing. Take the time to speak out. Reach out to us. If you have an idea for an episode or you want to comment on an episode, let us know what you think. Yeah. Totally. And we're pretty approachable on the Discord. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I'm going to go with what the guys are saying. Like, like, we do this, and this is fun, but we do this for you guys, the listeners, uh, because we want to encourage you. Uh, the the genesis of this was going, man. I, I wish there was more content out there that was about Gundam that was positive, and that you know, I would be okay going. Hey, Branson, your ten year old can listen to this, and it'd be cool. And mm-hmm. um, and I not feel gross listening to a podcast because there's a lot out there. Not all of them are that way, but I wanted to create a space for anime fans to gather around something that I love too. But it's about you guys. And so let us know how these encouraged you, how they challenged you. Let us know um, because we genuinely love you. We, we talk about Geek Devotion, the show from Devoted Geeks who are devoted to let people are loved. And across the board, all the shows in the Devoted Geek Network, that's our mission. Letting people know they're loved and cared for. And it's hard to do it if you don't tell us you're there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, how do we close the show? I don't even remember. All right, well, until I've next time. I've been on an island. I've been on an island this whole time, so. We'll, we'll have to figure it out. Until next <laughs> time, ladies and gentlemen, stay devoted. Peace and love. <laughs>